Hello everybody! Welcome to the Hinge Games live stream. We got Jock here. Ooh, I should actually fix that. <laughs> Hold on, I'm gonna I'm gonna fix that black bar above Jock's head. As good as otherwise, it's gonna bother me the whole night. <laughs> oh. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, oh, the black bar. Well, I had to redo some stuff. Hold up. Uh, all right. Let's see. Uh, da, da, da. And if I just go like this. Oop, there we go. I had to fix it. And you are a bit shorter than me. Yeah, you're you're framed a bit lower in the camera. So let me. Uh... It looks like it looks like you're at the children's table and I'm at the adults' table. <laughs> It's a power move. <laughs> All right, here we go. Oh wait, I gotta. Yeah, cause I gotta. I gotta change. There we go. All right. Oh hey man. Yeah. So uh, yeah, tonight we'll be talking about combat abilities and stuff like that. I'll open up the map, and we gotta go. We'll just go in the in one of the. I guess the uh, dungeon builder gym. That should have everything we need. Yeah, I think because uh, let's see, yeah, because I could trigger it down so it's about the same size, but then I gotta like move you up a bit. Your, I think your head is bigger than mine for sure. Hold on, there we go. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And I'm mostly obscured by a bunch of trees. There we go. <laughs> yeah, I'm stealth, man. Nobody's going to be able to see me. Okay, here we go. There we go. Now you can just see the bottom of Jacques' cab where it cuts off the... Okay, and what we can do... Transition. So, let's launch the game. Yeah, so, topics tonight. We'll be talking about a bunch of the abilities. I don't know, we'll probably get to around to most of them. Uh, most of them have ways of interacting with the environment, like puzzle pieces and stuff you can interact with. Uh, some of them are purely for combat. We don't, they don't really have any uh, uh, utility for puzzles or anything like that. Th though they do allow you to like shoot around corners and stuff like that. But a lot of the melee stuff is just like help you do better in combat. Mm Oh, yeah, good idea. Uh, I'm Bjorn Swenson. I'm the creative director slash, I don't know, game designer and programmer. <laughs> Jacques. Mm -hmm. There we go, that works. <laughs> Alright, so let's get started with a bit of combat. Get rid of all the other rooms I'm not using right now. <laughs> yep. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> that's all. That's all we could afford, man. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
All right, so first things first. You can actually sneak around. That guy saw me. You'll see a red hammer appear above someone's head because it's placeholder art. <laughs> but that lets them know that they're alerted to your present presence, but otherwise you can sneak around them. And generally, so it's it's based on dual stick shooter controls. You can see uh, the controls I've been putting out. All I'm doing is using the analog sticks right now. Uh, and then we have a melee mode you can go into if you press the right trigger. And it does a bit more damage, but you got to be in close range and you move around a bit slower. Yeah, probably. That's the thing is, because I, th I think there's a certain, um, like, sort of hardcore mentality for a lot of those. Uh, where it's, it's all about you have to dodge every hit because you only have, like, three health or something like that. But ours is a lot more. It's a ours is a lot more forgiving. Like the the sort of pacing and feel we're going for for a lot of the game isn't like intense shooter. It's more like Zelda, like running around and exploring environments. Nope, definitely not a bullet hell. It can feel like that sometimes, but usually if it's a bullet hell, then there are a lot of really weak enemies. Uh, so you can see I can sneak around here, hide behind these boxes. Or I can just blow up the boxes because there's health and treasure inside. Woo. Yep. Yeah, if the, the guy that sees you, you have actually, you have about a second before he, uh, before he notices you. All right, so there's some guys here blocking. So somebody's blocking. I'll just get him to block. So that guy's blocking. What you can do is actually, if you do a, a combo that goes around the outside, like a 180 or a 360, You'll do something, yeah, a special attack, dot combo, I gotta say combo, or I gotta say special attack, the dot combos. But basically, so you can see I did one there, and it stunned the guy that was blocking, and it makes it easier to hit. And so there's, it's the same mentality, so if you're doing it in melee, you do a swiping attack, and that'll, uh, that'll break someone's block if they're blocking. So I can do a swiping attack, breaks his block, and I kill him. And that's uh, a big thing. Like basically, we have so in there's uh, range mode and melee mode, uh, and it's the same inputs for similar moves, and they do the same thing. Like either of these will break the block of somebody who's uh, blocking. They're called uh, slash attacks, and we have another one, the uh, spin spiral. And then in melee, it's just the spin attack. And you keep doing it up in the top corner. You can see I have a green bar. That's my stamina gauge, and I use it every time I do a special attack. And there's... Hmm? Go ahead, Matt. No, no, if you had a question, I'm, I'm happy to answer. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, you, oh like the, the pause? Yeah, yeah, there's that's actually pretty interesting. So the way that works too is the bigger the enemies are, the longer the hit frames are. The like longer the the hit pause. So I'll try. Oh, hey Mike. Yeah, he's doing some concept art for us. Concept I I'm sorry, Jacques, but I I have very I have a lot of trouble understanding the difference between key art and concept art. Okay. Mm hmm mm hmm Ow. Oh, these guys hit really hard. Okay. Oh god, they've almost killed it. Okay. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, and it'll be... He's working on our main village hub right now, so... Lots of cool stuff coming in. Yeah. Ooh. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
I think I think we de- we designed they we both we had them both uh, separately, and I think it was sort of after we had all this variety of attacks. Like Matt did this uh, this this side slash attack that I'm doing right here. He did the animation for it, and we're like, okay, we have some moves we can do. Uh, and there we didn't actually have any reason to do them at the start, and eventually, so there's because there's a few different types. So there's a piercing attack like this one, this like that and the shotgun are both considered piercing attacks they'll go through enemy armor so if enemy has like a lot is wearing a lot of armor it'll just do bonus damage and then there's slam attacks like uh any like there's uh that's the circle volley and then there's the line volley and those stick in the ground and enemies can't walk through them but also they do more damage so there's the range slam attacks like that and then there's the melee slam attacks like that just do massive amounts of damage. So we. Uh, well, like, so we 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 had developed both of them, kind of separately, and then we we realized like, well, we have all these cool abilities you can do, like this slam, this triple slam looks really cool and everything. But why would you ever do that? We wanted to add some gameplay utility to it. So like, why would you ever do that rather than just a regular attack? Because the thing about the triple slam is, it it's like you can't move while you're doing it. Any of the melee abilities, like you kind of lose control for a bit. So there needs to be some big benefit to doing it. So what we did is we we came up with the various various reasons why you'd want to use them and made sure that there were different reasons for using each one. So like even if you have a favorite, like you're not just constantly just doing your favorite because it does massive damage. You're doing other stuff because somebody's blocking or or uh, you need to or you're getting overwhelmed and you want to like block someone's movement so like that guy can't get to me now. Yeah. Yeah, I'm like trapped in here so he can't get to me. He can do the same thing or this one specifically can't. I think uh let me switch to the turtles. The turtles actually have uh I'll just do I won't do a large turtle one. I'll just do a, a regular regular size yeah but like the the turtles actually have a similar ability like they do the same combo against you so you can't they can trap you basically and basically pretty much every ability that the player gets we give to another enemy at some point in the game yeah so like i can't run past this if i wanted to get through there like i'm just stuck yeah it's yeah it's very easy to get stuck. That's like uh, when playing through the main. And, oh, and the thing about turtles too is your projectiles. All of your attacks bounce off their back because of their shell, so they have like specific armor that uh, just doesn't take any damage. Or there's specific pot spots where they're just invulnerable. Uh, but this, when enemies first fight these turtles in the game, is usually one of the first places they die because it's just like they just get trapped. They don't realize they have to keep moving. Yep, yeah. Then you have to you have to like keep moving and and the thing is too, you get the block just before that. So like you can if I if they're throwing those attacks at you, you can just block. Oh, that's weird. Oh, somebody's saying they only hear Huh. Okay, let me just check that. Jacques, can you talk? Somebody's saying they can only hear uh they can only hear me talking. Can you talk? Uh oh yeah I can hear you but I think let's see updates close I think we're not getting I have the wrong uh, audio thing set up so are you talking now hello okay yeah that should be better hello that's better yeah. all right yeah okay cool yeah I didn't have I didn't have the desktop to audio on the stream oh well. <laughs> It was just me talking most of the time and then answering questions that nobody asked. <laughs> <laughs> so that's like most streams, uh-huh. so it's fine. Uh, thanks for the heads up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I guess. Uh, let's see. So what were we talking about? Oh, yeah, yeah. So I can go back down, and if I use the block, then like those those effects won't damage me. But it does become like uh, kind of hard, too. Oh. oh, yeah, and I can still walk through. It'll leave a gap. In the in the wall that they make. 
And then even your piercing attacks can't go through their shell, right? Uh, not the back side of their shell. The, the front side, yeah. Could I ask for a minor favor? Could you move your cursor? It's like right oh, in the middle of the yeah, screen. Sure. For some reason, it's distracting. Yeah. <laughs> Oh no, that's not for some reason, for obvious reasons, it's distracting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's cool. Uh, yeah, so we went through slam attacks. We went through slam attacks. And I guess we can go through the other abilities, because those are all the special attacks that like you do yeah. by inputting special uh, moves into the analog sticks. Ooh. And then we, I guess we can go into the different... Uh, the, what stuff you unlock throughout the course of the game now, too. So we have... This is my regular attack. And then I have an explosive shot that I can unlock throughout the course of the game. And a bounce attack. Which you saw me... Oh! And all of these take stamina. And you can do a combo of bounce attack or a combo with the explosive shot. But it takes extra uh, stamina. Each shot takes stamina, and then the combo takes stamina. Or the special attack takes stamina. So if I do it, you'll see eventually, uh, like only a few of my projectiles might be. Uh, let's see. Yeah. So right there. Yeah. So none of my projectiles were actually special there, and only one was there. So you can do them in combination with each other. Very cool. Yeah. And then all the range stuff has different uses. So we'll go over to the puzzle builder now. All right, let's start a new room. So first we'll start off with the explosive shot. Can light stuff on, f Can it, it can light up the pyre, which the pyre can light stuff, the explosive shot can't actually light, light stuff on fire though. And then let's see, destructible. And the explosive shot could obviously blow up little blocks. So Jacques, where do you start when you design the visuals for this for these abilities? Oh, uh, I actually haven't done any pass on it yet. It was actually well, we pretty much just start with whatever Doran has as a placeholder, and then we just kind of do reference searches for what looks good and will feel good with it, and then we just kind of add on to it. I haven't really done a whole lot of them yet, so I can't really speak too much by experience, but it'll uh, it'll get there. <laughs> the VFX are mostly placeholder right now. Taken so it's, from uh, the Unreal Store, yeah. So it's something that I'm gonna have to ask you again in two months, right? <laughs> two months, yeah. That sounds about right. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of them were made by a couple of friends of ours. Uh, one's uh, Bruno, and the other's Mark, Mark D'Amico, and Bruno, and Fonseca, and they were, yeah, they're just having fun with it. So mm. it kind of helped me help build like a solid foundation for all the effects going forward. So. All, all of the effects are pretty much attributed to them. So going forward, it'll be a lot easier for me to kind of fill out what's what's mm. there. They built the, the foundation for it. So, And then when you're going to go over it, you're going to make sure that it corresponds to the game art style that yeah. you want, right? Yeah, yeah. Ooh, so Bruno did that uh, fire effect there. And uh, mm -hmm. it's just kind of like that's uh, that's one good example. It's, it's a it's an effect that kind of suits the entire game. It has that same sort of cartoony feel as the characters, and it's a uh, it's nice. But a lot of the other ones are placeholder, like those those rays coming out of the uh, coming out of the the switches. Like those are all placeholder. Like pretty much everything right now is a placeholder. So we'll uh, we'll get around to kind of changing it to be ours. Oh. Something seems wrong with the fire. Like, uh, I should be able to use it to raise that platform, but it's not working right now. That's off by default. Yeah, it's not raising the platform. That's interesting. But, huh. uh, can you take a note of that, Jack? Sure. Okay. I, I kind of notice hmm? about the animations right now is, uh, you know, I animated them very hyper fast, so like ultra stylized. Never mm -hmm. realized that unless the lighting is like really good and oh that's that's kind of cool. uh, mm -hmm. and the effects really support you know, the, uh, what what's happening with the weapon readability mm -hmm. becomes very different. It's like, yeah, mm -hmm. so, yeah. A lot of the effects I we have are pretty placeholder, and like this doesn't even have an effect on it. There's no uh, no weapon trailer or anything. So it's it's ends up. Without it, it ends up looking very kind of janky. The 
mm. hard to see. So, yeah. That's going to be a chill. How would the music sound like in the game? I think we have a bit of music right now, but it's all placeholder. Like, we're going for... I don't know how would you how would you describe the stuff we have so far, Jacques? The the stuff that Eli's been sending. Our friend Eli's uh, doing a lot of the music. He's out in Vancouver, or he's on an island in the middle of nowhere <laughs> off the coast of Vancouver. <laughs> Denman <laughs> Island, yeah, BC. Yeah, he's a. Uh, it's it's sort of inspired by Koji Kondo, but definitely his own. It's a uh, Koji Kondo inspired, but kind of it has the flavor of a lot of the, like the world that we're trying to go for. So uh, it uses a lot of instrumentations from like a Celtic level, like for this particular level. And uh, it's unique, and it, but it's also kind of familiar at the same time. So. Okay. I'm just going to do some bounce post Sorry, I'm stuff. Taking, taking uh, notes while I do this. Notes. Okay. Uh, where is the switch? Oh, and I implemented a large step switch. We'll get to that when we talk about cleanability, though. Mm -hmm. So, here we go. So we have these uh, bounce posts, so when you use your bounce attack, it'll bounce between the posts. And then if I do this, there we go. And then we have other stuff, like, uh, that can be used to, like, drop drawbridges and things like that. And, uh, yeah. where is... We have a switch. Like that. Really cool. Or uh, where is that drawbridge? There we go. I mean, most of these visuals right now are also pretty placeholder, so uh, mm -hmm. don't think of them as any kind of uh, of the gospel. Like these these items were all sort of made quickly. There's no textures on them. They're just sort of made made for the. Uh, to get help Bjorn design the game. We'll, we'll do an actual art pass on it later. Uh, let's see. There we go. Yeah. Drops the drawbridge. There we go. Yeah. So that's the bounce and the explosive shot ability. Uh, and then we got the melee stuff. So there's basically there's three special melee abilities. Uh, the bounce shot, the explosive shot, and the split shot. I don't have the split shot right now because we don't really use it in any of the puzzles. And I, I was reviewing a puzzle earlier today. We haven't figured out how to uh, how to use it in a puzzle very well yet. Because it's, it's kind of like, since it's, because our game is one to four player co-op. And it's basically like, what can you do with a split shot that you can't do with three players? <laughs> yeah, and I have, I have some very contrived puzzle elements, but it's like, it, it seems it's a bit of a stretch, but they're kind of difficult to use, so... It's something either either we just won't use it for puzzles, and because you get it near the end of the game anyway, so it's fine. If if you don't really use it for puzzles and it's just sort of a power up, uh, it'd be nice if we could, but it's not uh, it's not the end of the world if we can't figure out a way. But let me get rid. I'll just clear the room and let's set up some stuff we can use with spinning. Well, I mean, you can also have puzzles after you get. The split shot, or you need to shoot to like, at two separate targets at the same time. But I mean, if you play co-op, you just don't need to use that ability. Yeah, it true. Would be it wouldn't be gatekeeping because you wouldn't want players to be able to get there without arriving at that point in the game. But mm -hmm. still, you know, just showing how you can use the ability after you get it, you get that split shot puzzle where you just you instantly see the use of it and see what it does by solving a puzzle. Kind of like what they did in all those Mega Man puzzles. I don't know if you played Mega Man a lot, but when you get like new weapons or new gear, sometimes you have that mm -hmm. visual cue right away on how to use it to interact with the environment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. That, well, that's the thing we've been trying to do with a lot of our abilities. And, and like we have something like that with uh, the split shot where there's basically three posts and they have to be hit at the same time and they'll they go from like standing to falling down and it's just kind of it's kind of hard to hit them all at the same time and yeah it just it just it does it feels sort of like too too engineered to be specifically about that one thing 
where it's like because yeah, like here like with this it's kind of uh, let me just get because I can like link a platform up to this I do this and it's set to winch and then I can do this so like if I need to I could like use this to raise a platform kind of makes sense it's like spin attack spins a thing spins a gear this platform has a bit of a winch kind of works uh, but like the the whole split shot thing it's it feels very weird I like the push block so we have a cleave ability that pushes things away it'll push enemies as well but it has this big block that you can push around mm -hmm. and I can go I'll go down and I'll push push them around I'll just show you one more thing so with the push block and the seesaw um, it's over here Put the push block out one side, and then we have a leap attack. So that launches the push block into the air, and then that launches you into the air. And we have like uh, fans and stuff to push you, or push you or the push block around. Like this, so we can just have a fan that like pushes stuff. Oh, that's awesome! And how hard is it to find the perfect distance that your abilities push that block? Uh, the thing is, like we we've been playing around with that a lot because it is, it it uh, the initial size of the block, like the blocks used to be about double the size, or I guess like <laughs> eight times the size because it was like twice as tall, twice as wide, and twice as thick. Uh, and we shrunk them down because this like this is roughly what the player sees when they're running around. Like this is how far the camera zoomed. And generally, the way you want it to work is you want it. You want to be able to see where the block is going to end up. You don't want to like run up to it and then push it, and it goes off screen. You you kind of sure. want to be able to see like your target where you're going to push it to. And we also added uh, a few things. So like we placed these uh, block attractors all over the place, and it's it's because the the uh, the uh, the push block is actually using physics as is the uh, the seesaw. So it's, it can be a bit unpredictable where you're going, but with these, it'll actually like attract it. So I can put those down and then it'll just land on those, on those spots. So we'll, we use those all over the place to kind of control where it's gonna land. And they'll give a hint to the player, like we can, we can turn them off visually so the player can't really see, but generally we keep them up so the players can kind of get a hint of like where things are gonna go when they push it around and like these these that attractor exists like you can see the little circle on the the platform there there's a, an attractor on the platform so it's more likely to land on the platform yeah all right so now that we've seen how those abilities interact with the puzzle stuff let's go see how they work in combat go back to chameleons. I'm, I'm using chameleons because they don't have any special abilities. They're like the first enemy you run into in the game. And there's no special tricks up their sleeves, so if I'm just trying to show off abilities and stuff. So, first one. Let's see. Okay, there's the hammer. Oh, oh. yeah. I, I'm not sure if I said this earlier, but you have a short window after they notice you to kill them before everybody gets alerted. So you can actually, like, stealth take them all stealth out. Stealth kills. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So I'm just yeah. get the feeling that should be like a giant exclamation mark. <laughs> oh, yeah. Metal Gear Solid style. Yeah. You're, you're the art director, Jack. Yeah. <laughs> it's whatever you want it to be. I will so, write that down. With the cleave attack, yeah, I can push guys away. Oh, that didn't work so well. Oh. Let's try this again. Oh. <laughs> See, that's one of the things is it's actually kind of hard to get off. Because if I get hit while I'm doing the windup, then I get knocked out of it. Yep, and we have, uh, I don't have any of them ready to go right now. I could load up a different map, but we have, we added, like, metal enemies that you'll have to push into water so that they rust. Like, the metal enemies will be invulnerable until you get them in water and they rust. So you'll have to use the push attack to push them in, a, in the water. We have fire enemies that you can push into water and then that snuffs out the fire and then they stop regenerating health. Then we have water enemies that are the opposite, and you push them out of water because they're constantly regenerating health while they're in the water. And I even set up a quest related to some to all of them. All right, I set up quests nice. related to each each one. So 
players will run into it if they do do the side quests. And, I okay, just so that was clean. On, on that, yeah. that floor in the arena. Uh, mm -hmm. That's pretty. I like that. That's a nice <laughs> I think we have to dull it down a bit, though. But yeah, thanks. Well, I mean, yeah, it's it's color lighting balances, but, uh, but yeah. it's a really beautiful design. Thanks. So we had a little target thing for the leap attack. Ooh, these guys actually they don't have a lot of health, and the leap does a lot of damage. But it's fun because it like flattens guys, so you'll see like, oh, they all died. Nice. Oh, yeah, and then you you can see the monsters have a little quip sometimes. That it's pretty hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think one guy says, at least I don't have to do my taxes. <laughs> I, I saw one I saw one say, don't forget to water my plants. Yep. That was pretty good. <laughs> That's great. I think we'd have one, like, please delete my browser history. <laughs> <laughs> I just oh, remember I when I took a, took a walk and um, walked by... Paul Green's studio, go. and I just texted him, someone in your studio forgot to water his plants, because all the plants in the window were dead, so... Oh, jeez. Oh, boy. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, Leap flattens these guys, and actually, if you have a, a push block in the middle of a fight, you can push a block on it, and the block will flatten them as well. And it's just like Mario Kart, like, you know, they get flattened, they shoot, nice. and then they'll, like, <laughs> spring back up. And the last one. Okay, yeah. So I think for the last one, for spin attack, I'll put in like a huge combat with a lot of guys because it's fun. So that one. Uh, actually, I'll get rid of that room and I'll do a big room. So, Matt, what was your favorite ability to design so far to animate? Oh, gosh. Well, it was a, a couple of years ago when I actually animated them. Uh, I, I enjoy uh, uh, the cleave just because it's a rapid spin that goes into into an uppercut. And mm -hmm. uh, the leap attack was kind of fun too, just because I wanted to do sort of a cartoony kind of Final Fantasy IV Dragoon style leap off screen to hit yeah. the ground. Yeah, exactly. Uh, That's what I, I love but... about like the fact that it turned into, like we added a targeting thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, That's so, great. Yeah. That's perfect. <laughs> Yeah. I'm actually really stoked that you managed to put that in. And it's uh, much more playable now. Especially yeah, compared and to you have a bit of control. Like, like, I don't know. Yeah. yeah, like I don't know if you saw, but like I can actually move around. Well, we could. We'll have to tweak the animation at some point. But it's like, yep, yeah, I could go forward or backwards. Yeah. Or whatever. But yeah, it 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 was surprisingly easy. I just like. Hmm? Go ahead. It doesn't look too bad because it's very fast. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. If, the only if, thing that's missing is I, some if consistency I had a million to the motion. Years, yeah. Yeah. If I had a lot of time to polish these animations, I would probably do a pass where I'd slow everything down a little bit. Like it would still be quite yeah. hyper fast, but maybe a little. It's just mm. uh, it just looks a bit too strobey the speed that it goes right now. <laughs> yeah. Just... Yeah. Well, I know there's because the regular attacks like... aren't as bad, but because uh... I know specifically for the cleave. Who actually do I have? Yeah, for the yeah. cleave. Yeah, for the cleave, because it's like. Yeah, if you I if mean, you watch it frame by frame, it just kind of wiggles back and forth. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So it's it's that's an ability that would be heavily dependent on the weapon trail effects, mm -hmm. like kind of a spinning yeah. kind of hurricane, like, like a buzzsaw kind and of because thing. Because that, yeah, exactly. You have to turn it into a buzzsaw, and if if the saw effect isn't there, then the animation mm -hmm. just looks broken. It just looks like a glitch. Mm -hmm. But this, so. the speed of it actually adds to the effect and the environment of the game. I, I feel like if you slow it down too much, it's not going to have as much impact unless you have a really, really big weapon, right? It's mm -hmm. true. Yeah, it would have to be, mm -hmm. like, it would still have to be really fast. But maybe just, like, a couple of frames more. Just, just like, it would still be very responsive and still be very stylized. But maybe, I don't know, maybe it would look better if, if the effects were polished and it would be I'm yeah, just, I'm hypercritical of my own work, especially, you know, after after a year or so after looking at it, mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, yeah, I didn't do that. I'm trying to do that now. But, uh... Yeah, it's definitely, I think, um, effects, like, would help out a lot. Because you see, kind of see it with the spin attack. Like, I, these are, I think these are from Infinity yeah. Blade or something like that. Those are still placeholder. 
Uh, but they give you like a much better sense of the motion and the area that you're affecting with, yes. uh, with that ability. Yeah, if you're able to get a bit of that with the cleave. I mean, the, the trick with the cleave is, I guess, I don't know if... I can't remember if the intent, if we actually wanted the buzzsaw part of the cleave to actually do the damage, or just, just the uppercut. Uh, no, it should just be the upper because the thing is, factor. It, it's because uh, yeah, yeah. the damage. So the idea is uh, more like it's it should be doing damage and pushing everything in sort of a cone in front of you. Yeah, yeah. So I mean that that's another consideration is if if there's this buzzsaw, the expectation might be that the buzzsaw oh, that should also what's, like what do should be doing damage. damage. Yeah, and that's if, true. Uh, yeah, it, I think. And if the... it has this big effect to a thing that doesn't do any damage, then. You know, maybe I maybe the move has to be rethought. Maybe there shouldn't be a buzzsaw there. Maybe it should just be a big upper deck. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like the buzzsaw. Feel saw. maybe just playing around with the um, weapon trail might help visualize what works or yeah. not for damaging. Right? You do a special attack, and when it lights up, that's what hurts people. Yeah. And yeah. when yeah. it doesn't, it's still in the winding up phase, so it doesn't yeah. like it's you're well, vulnerable. Once... Yeah, once we get the proper weapons in there, I think uh, another thing that we were going to do, just kind of, we're going to talk about adding juice and flavor to the to the art. Uh, usually when those attacks happen, the, the weapon flashes white uh, during that kind of the arc yeah. of when it would damage. So like, there's all these small things that, that a lot of games do, like arcade things that read to help exactly. read and help sell a hit. And none yeah. of those are in right now. In fact, those are all placeholder weapons. So when we get around to doing yeah. the actual weapon, those will all be in there. That's it. Although I could probably could probably set it up with the shaders eventually. Yeah, yeah, for sure. It, it, yeah. It's very kind of devil in the details kind of thing that you do yeah. like during the polish phase. Yeah. Just to make they sure it's it, uh, nice and readable. Yeah, there's a great GDC talk about it called uh, adding, was it adding the juice or adding yeah, the juicing up your game? Sauce. Yes, yes. Yeah. <laughs> game. Yeah, I remember. Yeah. I mean, I, I just call it readability. If you can't, yeah. If the player can't tell what's mm -hmm. going on, like what they're even mm -hmm. seeing, then yeah, you need the juice. You need the yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, actually, because I think uh, I'm trying to think, like, because juice isn't necessarily readability. Actually, a lot. Oh, oh, there's a bird here, <laughs> and the bird enemies shrink me now, so I'm tiny. <laughs> oh, <boy. laughs> And that's it reduces my health. Really I only have, here. whereas normally I had three hundred health or th two thousand health. I now only have three hundred, and I died. Oh boy, <laughs> that just doesn't seem very fair. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually useful. There's areas that you can only get to if you're tiny, so you need them to shrink you in combat. Oh crap! He got me. You use all the abilities from Mario Kart against. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> well, didn't you know that? Birds are actually battery powered and made by the government to spy on you. <laughs> we have the proof I, I, right here. I didn't know that, but I immediately mm -hmm. believe you. <laughs> okay. Oh, I got a crossbow. Why do we? Why do you think we're in lockdown right now? They have to change the batteries in the birds. <laughs> that <Yes>. makes sense. <laughs> the batteries and the viruses. Oh, God. Is that a giant that bubble? Oh, it wore off. Ooh. Yeah, that's that. a giant bubble wand. <laughs> yeah. <Yep. laughs> Chaos. That's what birds use, man. <laughs> Got it. I like the guy was pointing at you with this sickle that was three times the length of his own body. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think because I think so. The thing with the birds is they also have the charge attack. So when they they charge up, it like their weapons grow and then they do a hit for a massive amount of damage. Oh, nice. Mm-hmm. Oh, I'd love to do special animations for all of these. <laughs> yeah, I'd love to hire Monday. you, man. We, <laughs> we're missing too many other things right now. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to think. I think we covered a lot of the abilities. Any yeah. other questions? Uh, you want to? Sh did you show the? He showed the bounce post, but did you show the bounce in combat? The bounce in combat? Uh oh yeah yeah I can show that. Oh thanks Chewy Turtle. Yeah we're looking we're uh we're hoping it'll be really fun. It's the weird thing honestly is I've been working on this for so long. It's really nice to hear that because uh like I fall asleep asleep playing this because I've played <laughs> it so many times. I'll be like playing through one of the levels and be like half asleep. I'll be like uh yeah, and I it's the thing is like. Think about the game you've played the most in your entire life. Mm -hmm. I've probably played ten, this ten times as much. Like I put, oh I put like I, I don't know. I want to say I put two thousand hours into Dota, but I know that's not even a lot. Like how many hours <laughs> did you put into Team Fortress Two, John? 
at least three thousand on the engineer alone. So yeah, on the engineer alone. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, I, I know each map and where to put the turret. Yeah. Oh, and see, that's the, the thing is, like, I just got map. into a fight and I'm doing all yeah. my optimal abilities, but I want to show off yeah. the bounce. So let's go. Let's yeah. do the bounce. You're saying the bounce was at times overpowered in combat. <laughs> oh God, I still haven't done the balance it. for it yet. It's something yeah. I've been meaning to do. I've said it on the last few streams. Oh yeah, it should just yeah. do each successive hit should just do thirty percent less damage. Yeah. Oh uh, yep. Yeah. <laughs> when Oof. so when there's a lot of enemies on screen, you just get more and more bounces, and everything yep. just dies really easily. Yeah. <laughs> okay, and there since, we go. Yep. And since it it's works with your combos, you can just do the shotgun blast. <laughs> <laughs> That's so OP. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I think there might be a balance issue there. <laughs> it is really fun, yeah. though. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, Bjorn, have you designed any kind of abilities like that before in your career, or is it your first time doing it? Uh, I worked a, a bit. Like, most of my career has pretty much just been level design, uh, and that's more, more like what we saw in the other room with the puzzles, like... All of these puzzle, all of these elements, interact with the world in in a different way, uh, mm -hmm. and then I just try and build puzzles. I, on Tomb Raider multiplayer, I did some weapon design, which for the most part was just like okay, differentiate between these three assault rifles so they feel different, but all are still useful. And and same thing with a bunch of shotguns, same things with a bunch of bows, same things with a bunch of pistols. Uh, the thing that was interesting was we came up with, we didn't get to do the environmental interaction stuff. That's that's something I really wanted to push for this game was to make sure as many of your abilities as possible, like the core abilities, everything you can use to interact with puzzles. That those were that's what we started with the the extra combat stuff. The uh, a lot. I'll just finish making this room. The extra combat stuff, like um, uh, like. The swipe and the slash attack and and all those we we added those pretty we added those pretty late. Uh, let's see. So I want mini and I want epic. All right. Let's see how this works with the the bounce shot. Uh, like we had all those abilities and so like the leap attack, the spin attack, all the stuff that interacts with puzzles. We had designed those first and then we kind of added all the stuff later because originally we only had. The only thing you needed to do, uh, like only time you needed to do combos on the analog stick, uh, like special inputs, was for the leap attack, the spin attack, and the cleave attack. And we found like most players, if that was the first time we introduced it, was just, oh, when you get this one ability, then it was just too jarring. So now we added a bunch more stuff you can do doing similar inputs. And then it's, it, it eases you into it a bit more. So it's not like, Oh, yeah. there's only one one thing where you do special inputs on on the analog sticks now. It's, it's a core co part of combat, and it makes you so much more effective. Like, if I so stop using that, going... it's so like it takes so much longer. Yeah, just to so it's like going kind of going back to that Mega Man reference you were saying. If you played Mega Man Zero, it's like pretty much playing with uh, Zero. <laughs> it's like having mm -hmm. having the uh, all those Street Fighter inputs, having all the Street Fighter moves. Like, I mean, you can just mm -hmm. play. Play with your regular blaster, but having all the other special moves is so much better. You know, like Castlevania, Symphony of the Night, all those other fun games. Mm -hmm. All of our favorite influences, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, for sure. But yeah, if I try, if I don't try to do any special, if I try not to do any special attacks, this is just going to take forever. And it's like, I can do yeah. it. And it, it does actually start feeling a lot more like a dual stick shooter where you you have to constantly keep yeah. moving, otherwise you're going to get hit and stuff like that. Something yeah. else that I was very intentional the way I designed this is you can do a lot of the moves by accident, but it should mm -hmm. never be like the moves are powerful enough that you never feel like, oh crap, I didn't mean to do that. It's just you did more damage. And I figured that'll be a way that a lot of people actually discover how to do the moves is like okay. they'll move in a certain way and then it's like, wait a minute, what just happened there? How did I do that? And then try and replicate it and be like, oh, if I do this. I have no idea how, how jarringly banal this looks without all the special effects. <laughs> <laughs> like this looks really really <laughs> yeah you need to yeah. to, to your point you Bjorn, that sounds like a really good idea for design like uh, yeah. you make it very very pick up and play that way 
Okay. Yeah, and the because players to learn more about the systems. Yeah, and I think because a a lot of this is designed specifically for co op. Uh mm -hmm. so the way I, and it's like it's it's very hard to describe verbally. Like you can see the inputs I'm making, but the way I mm -hmm. kind of imagine this playing out on a lot of people's couches is you know two people are playing it and then they do something, and then they're just like, oh yeah, I just did this on the controller, just do that, and that's how I yeah. did this combo. And, and so there's, I, I assume there's going to be a lot of teaching like that, like when you're just sitting on the couch mm -hmm. next to somebody and you discover something, yeah. you just show them. That was another thing. Were... Street Fighter, you know, you got that. <laughs> yeah, it's way Sonic easier Boom. to do this stuff than in Street Fighter, though. Really? Way yeah, easier. I mean, about the same. Yeah. As I long think... as it's not as ridiculous and you have like 18 button combos to do a finish him or something. <laughs> yeah, nothing like that. But it's definitely like, yeah, I think doing it. The, the mistake I've seen a lot of people make is they try and do it super fast. And if you do it yeah. too fast, like, they try, basically, because it has to be able to, you have to spend at least one frame in each part of the circle. So, like, yeah. back, down, left, or back, down, forward, in order for it to get, but if you do it too fast, like, I guess I'm running, let's see what I'm running at right now. Yeah, so I'm running at 60, 60 FPS, so it's fine. I'm probably not going to be able to screw it up. But, like, I've had I've had friends that come over and try it, and they try and do it, like, ridiculously fast, and it just doesn't work. And, it, and I don't know how to explain to people, like, oh, you, do, you don't need to be super fast. It's super slow. Like, I've well, shown I mean, the uh, tutorials. Something I got from playing Dark Souls, which is a wholly, totally different genre, right? Yeah. Is you need to go... To add the speed the game wants you to because if you yeah. want to go too fast or too slow your combos won't work yeah so yeah. I, I feel like there's a, a key in watching how your character moves and how fast he goes doing that stuff and you have to follow the visual cue that your character is giving you also uh, that could be it yeah because the, the, the thing is though like I think I think the impression a lot of people were getting, and maybe, and maybe that's the thing, is if they play it a bit more, because I do even have a dojo. Like if I go, let's quit out. And I'll jump to the to the dojo where we train all, where we show you all the abilities. I have a controller in 3D that uh, shows you the inputs you're supposed to do at the rate you're supposed to do them. Uh, but my friend that was, and I guess maybe this is just like one or two friends, so not not the best. Uh, 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 sample size but the, the, <laughs> the thing that they were running into is they thought they weren't doing it fast enough so they just kept trying to do it faster and faster and faster so I wonder if there's a way I could detect if they're going too fast and then just have like a voice bubble pop up saying slow down a bit <laughs> <laughs> were these people playing a lot of fighting games in general or uh, I think they played a lot of NHL that uh, might explain it. Stick? Oh yeah, yeah. So the skill using stick the skill is stick. usually pretty slow too. Skill yeah. stick's pretty pretty slow too. Cause, yeah, because you have to have the puck on your stick. So you can't like you can't do it too fast. You can't whip it around. It has to be has to be kind of slow okay. on that as well. Yeah. Uh, what platform is this going on? Uh, so we have a we have it running on PC. Uh, we have in the past because it it just takes time to like set up and everything. We have in the past had it running on Xbox and. Android. Hmm, sorry. Uh, but we are planning on putting it on everything. It is made to play with a controller, not a mouse. It supports mouse and keyboard, sort of, right now. We haven't put a lot of time into it, but you should be able to play with that. But it is made for console, and we want to put it on everything. So, like, we definitely, we've talked to Nintendo. We, we're Sony partners and stuff like that. And we have Xbox dev kits, and we've had it running on that. Oh, what? Oh, it didn't bring me back to Dreams Reach. God damn. <laughs> that should have... Okay, that's a bug. Gotta make sure. Could you add a note for that too, Jacques? And the bounce thing, so I don't forget. <laughs> uh, make sure that's in there, and I'll put it in Nerf so I, I don't forget that bounce is o OP. And back to Dreams Reach. Uh, well, say uh, continuing game uh, guarantees you go to Dream Reach because... Because right there, it should have loaded me into Dreams Reach, but my last save was in a gym, or it was in the Puzzle Builder, so it sent me to the Puzzle Builder instead of Dreams Reach. So I should be able to go, like, continue, go to Dreams Reach. Uh, let's try this one. 
Fire guy. All right, fire guy. Let's do this. Oh, cool. Yeah, that's that's one of the few things. The hair is not completed, <laughs> but that's that's one of the things Jacques has actually had time to do is yeah. uh, is the character, is the player character. You're going to get helmets, too. The armor's all going to be swappable. The weapons are going to be swappable. Yep, we have a whole kind of Diablo-style loot system where there's, okay. you know, there's, there's a helmet, arms, arm pads, breastplates... Uh, like you, you can get a cape or wings, I think. Is it? Because there was a back. I think piece, I, might, I just have it as yeah. back. Piece this is right the now. this is the town that Mike is working on on uh, right now. Oh, yeah, I can run around, but yeah, he's got he's got. Uh, we're gonna have special buildings because I think we're far enough along. Yeah. Uh, let's see. So yeah, there's this is Neath's dojo. We're calling it a dojo for now, uh, and it's basically where you go and train. But I think we need a different term for it because it's not like she's not Japanese and it's should be more general uh <laughs> and then we have a like the totem shop over here we're calling them totems for now we're probably going to change them to tomes and books and stuff like that uh and basically there are hundreds of these yeah training hall that's pretty good yeah. actually yeah, yeah we yeah, just mike, call that. mike calls it the training hall <laughs> there we go uh so the totem stuff uh we're going to rename that as books there's hundreds of totems spread out throughout uh all of the game worlds there's five different massive game worlds uh mm -hmm. that you can go to from this hub and there's totems hundreds of totems spread throughout and if you collect enough of them basically if you collect five then oh i don't have any right now so i can't <laughs> go to the shop but there's a shop there and uh, you can equip them and they'll give you bonuses to every give bonuses to everybody in the party like extra uh, ranged attack damage or bonus gold pickups or bonus xp or evasion and there's a bunch of different stats that you can if you collect all the totems of a certain one uh, or the more totems you collect from a, from us or books from a certain uh, deity like odin or something like that the bigger the bonus is for that stat for that totem and so there's and they're hidden all over the world or all over the other worlds then there's uh odin here so he's i i, I got to ask though why is that guy dressed in cardboard because he's placeholder. That's our placeholder NPC guy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's from Infinity Blade, I think. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah, that's I think that's an arbor is that one of the arbor sets you can get in Infinity Blade? That's just cardboard. <laughs> it's it's one of the yeah. joke armor sets. It's like zero zero zero, but you have to kind of <laughs> level it up, unfortunately. You have to like fight a bunch of like really high end <laughs> bosses with yeah, I've played a lot yeah. of Infinity Blade. You have to fight a no, lot of these no, high end I love bosses it's Snake. That. He's he's upgraded his his cardboard box into like a full <laughs> set of armor. <laughs> it's just yeah. just stand stiff and nobody notices he's there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I think they I think what they do in Infinity Blade is they give that to you and say you have to you have to basically fight a whole bunch of high level monsters to upgrade this and if mm -hmm. you want to level up. So it's like one of those things. Yeah. And I think those are characters from Paragon. So that's not uh, that's yeah. the jarring yeah. style change. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And like, so this is uh, the armory. Basically, so we have sort of, sort of a Diablo style loot system, but except, basically, there's, uh, so we, there's like over two thousand pieces of armor you can get, but basically every piece of armor and every weapon you pick up just goes back to your armory. There's no inventory management. So and you only keep the best level the highest rarity level or most exclusive one so like if you have a rusty version of a sword and then you pick up the uh like the legendary version of it it just you just get rid of the rusty version yeah uh, and then but also you can upgrade stuff here so i can uh like what do i have equipped right now so where's my i'll just pick something random so i can i can actually enhance this so i'm spending money you can see my money's going down and then i just enhanced yep. it boom enhancing it more Boom. All right. Now I got Tim's Earth Opal Spear. We'll have to come up with names for them, too. Or, you know, their Kickstarter stretch goals. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you yeah. want the sword game after you? <laughs> the villagers are going to be all, like, Kickstarter. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah we're going to have. Yeah. 
we had a cool idea for Kickstarter where it's like if you and, and the you funny thing is, is I realized that the in, the equipment system that you just made right there that's remarkably similar to Infinity Blade. You should oh, play yeah. it; it's a lot of fun. Yeah, it's like it's okay. basically Mike Tyson's Punch Out, but with loot. <laughs> okay. What? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just try it. it. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> Mike yeah. Tyson's punch out with loot, and then you grab your every item that you get. You have to level it up, and <laughs> mm -hmm. it's good. Okay. Yeah. Cool. I think that. We, oh yeah, the reason we came here got a bit sidetracked. We'll go down to the the training hall. Mm -hmm. The money in it. It's I just think, gold. Yeah, it's just gold. Because you go training you go from a bunch okay. of different places. Gold, I think, just makes sense for yeah. it's universal enough. So yes, this is. Yeah. This is how we show you how to make those inputs. So enter melee mode, press right trigger, forward on one stick, and then back, back, back. I love that slow-mo. Yeah. The, of the heavy sword. Yeah. <laughs> it's because oh yeah, so this is the heavy sword. And as a melee weapon, it, it uses it right now it uses the same animations as the spear. But we're going to eventually get an animation that's like swinging it around and the longer you use it over the course of about 15 seconds it increases in speed so it starts off being really slow to use and then like just gets faster and faster and faster interesting enough when you have big two-handed swords like that it's yeah. way easier to keep them moving in that yeah. series of movements so it makes total yeah. sense mm -hmm. yeah but you keep that massive damage boost for having that. Yeah. Withstanding yeah, the first yeah. 15 like, seconds, yeah. Yeah, because you can see, like, okay, so that, boom, did 2,000 damage. And then if I switch to... Oh, if I... This is this is a purple spear, though, so this is going to do a lot of damage, too. Oh, even the, even the purple level spear doesn't do as much damage. Yeah. And all of these dummies, like, if, they'll only take damage if I do the right attack. So you can tell... And there's a little uh, view effects to show. <laughs> yep, yep. Smash. Hulk smash. Yeah. I wonder if you do something like Zelda, where it's it's the controller, but it looks more, you know, like an ancient tablet. Oh, yeah. <laughs> because the, the thing is, like, yeah. the only thing that's really important on this is just the analog sticks, right? As long as you can mm -hmm. tell that it's... The problem yeah. we had before is it was, it was just a box of two analog sticks, and people thought yeah. that was the order you were supposed to perform them in, rather than do yeah. this on the right stick, then do this on the left stick. Yeah. yeah. We'll keep controllers yeah. for now, unless you think of something yeah. else. But well, it, it's, if it's shaped roughly like a controller, that's fine, yeah. but like basically we can get rid of all the buttons. And if it's just... Because yeah. most controllers have roughly the same shape, it's like you got like... Mm -hmm. The two things protruding down the side, and then two analog mm -hmm. sticks near the middle, and that's all that really matters. Because in oh, in the my, text my bubble, it says controller. like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So and you can even see like in the tutorial box, it says hold down the right trigger. So, but yeah, having those dummies react only to the right input is really really helpful to to know what you're doing and if you're doing it right. Mm -hmm. yeah yeah like the, the one of the other things i learned when i had a friend over playing it was like so that we have the spin attack but we also have the cleave and the side swipe and it was like okay do the cleave attack so he was doing this move and he was like well it looks like i did it but so a couple of things i did was like okay so i added the name pops up when you do it and we'll probably have i don't know how we'll handle that in the end because i don't know if we want the name popping up it's not bad but Either maybe some better UI or something like that for it. Uh, but first is like, okay, now I did the cleave, and you can clearly tell, okay, that's the cleave. Because if you're yeah. if you're new to the game and you don't know the names of any of the moves, and we tell you to do, you need to do a specific move to push this block. We need to, it needs to be crystal clear that uh, you yeah. are doing the right move or the wrong move. Ooh. Yeah, it it might be I like to make a lot of spinning attacks. So yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so when, some, when, when you get a tutorial that says, do the spinning attack, and you're just like, well, this is a spinning attack. But the gear's not turning. Yeah, you, you might want to do a toggle maybe on the name popping up or tie it to the, if you have multiple difficulty levels, say the, the hardest don't have it, but yep. the easier ones do or something. 
Well, well I, the, I think uh, when you go up to uh, when you we go do up have to, like, a uh, in in the options menu, yeah. you can graphics, no, uh, display. So you can turn off damage text, health bars, enemy health bars, enemy health text. Health text is like how much the number of how much health they have left. Health bar is health bar, name is name, ability names, and then you know, player helmet. So you can turn that stuff all on and off. And even just pressing the uh, the back button, as you can see, I'm pressing. That'll turn it on and off too. So like you can't like I can't see the ability name. Now I can see the ability name. But I I really also like the the damage counters in these kind of games because half the fun is seeing the numbers go up, right? Oh yeah yeah yeah. yeah. That's a huge thing in like Borderlands, which helps a lot. Yeah. Uh, like when you go when you go to a different area in Borderlands and suddenly um, like you're just doing one damage to everybody and you're like. I cannot survive here. I better go level <laughs> up because everybody's away. It doesn't matter how good a shot you are and how good you are at jumping around and dodging. It's like you're, you're not doing enough damage. You need to get out of there. Go somewhere else. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I don't know if we want to do via. That would be pretty funny. <laughs> the character should shout the name for each of the attacks anime style. <laughs> so we need an even longer wind up animation so they can say they can get the full day attack. <laughs> but yeah, the funny thing is you get you get one special attack per player. So it'll be like you're a Pokemon and you're just kind of <laughs> spin, 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 spin. <laughs> yeah. Or they're all doing different moves, so it's just like it just sounds like a crowd of people yelling like spin, cleave, side swipe, thousand pokes. <laughs> Yeah, it'd be like playing any Zelda game with multiple links going. Hah, 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 hah. Oh, cool. Thanks, that that would be horrifying. Have you ever? So, uh, it's like me playing Street Fighter when I spam the Dragon Punch. It's like. I think. Uh, yeah, one thing we didn't really go over was deflecting attacks. Yeah. Like, if you time your block, I have the charge attack right now. So I'm charging instead of blocking, but it does the same thing. Uh, but yeah, it deflects the attacks back. And this is very useful when you're fighting the oversized guys. Because they they have so much health, they take so much damage. That you basically... The, the most efficient way to take them out is usually to deflect their attacks back at them. Oh, that's, that's because the thing deflect like mirrors your damage, damage, right? Charge attack. Uh, well, it, it does... So... There's... A little complicated but well it's not that complicated so basically it takes it does increase the damage but only because it increases the velocity so a projectile's velocity is it helps determine its damage so stuff that goes faster does more damage than stuff that's going slower so if you're running towards something and shooting your bullets are going faster they'll be doing more damage than if you're backing away so what happens when you deflect is it's going at one speed when it heads towards you, and then it's going slightly faster when it gets deflected back. So it'll be doing more damage than it would have done to you. I tried doing some stuff where it like stacked on some extra damage when you deflected it back, but it was just it was just brokenly strong <laughs> at that point. <laughs> so do you have enemies deflecting your attacks back at you also, or? I, not on purpose. I've only seen it happen accidentally a few times. It's probably something I should look into because I wouldn't mind seeing that happen. But I, th because I think yeah, I, I remember those great boss fights against Ganondorf, like yeah. in the Ocarina of Time, right? Where you have this yeah. tennis match, basically. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, it might not work in every situation, but sometimes, you know, having that enemy being able to shoot something back at you that you shot at him might be interesting because it it will give you that oh shit moment right yeah, yeah. i think that, i think technically i can play around with that because technically i don't think it's that difficult or but it might be fairly easy for us to do like we could have an enemy because we already have like all the bosses are generally immune to your regular attacks like even your ranged and melee attacks none of them will actually hit uh like the frog boss you only can damage from inside right uh, mm -hmm. But we could have a boss that has the same kind of armor that's just in, in, invulnerable, except his attacks you can deflect back, and that's the only way you can damage him. And then, then I could work on it because if basically if he, because there's so many bullets that you can fire, like this might this is a bullet hell game for your enemies because of all the different combos you can do. With stuff. 
stuff, right? Yeah. So getting them to deflect stuff, maybe not. Uh, but if it's like, if you're doing the tennis match thing, like Ganondorf, and it's like, he just needs to deflect back his attack if you deflect it to him. And then you can do it a couple of times. Yeah, I can see that not being too tough to integrate. Yeah, I mean, that's the way I was seeing it in my mind is an enemy deflecting something you throw, or you already threw back at him because else mm -hmm. it would just try to block one of the multiple bullets coming at him and just fail anyway, so... Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'd have to probably read as something that uh, that's deflectable too. Mm -hmm. Well, all, all projectiles right. are yeah. deflectible, but yeah. it would be because it would be like, okay, this is a special enemy class, and maybe that's a different element we could do or something. Yeah. Where it's like, this is a special enemy class that can only be damaged by their own bullets. Mm. Well, I mean, you already diamond, have diamond great... element. Sorry. That yeah, that makes sense. A diamond element. Yeah, like a diamond. The only yeah. thing that cut a diamond is it is another diamond. Yeah, we have we do like a diamond. We do like a crystal uh, material. Just throw that yeah. on. But yeah. Yeah, because you have great visual cues so far on what enemies can or can't do, um, depending on how they look. Like the metal enemies, it's very clear when you see them what should work because they're one, they're metal and do they're beside a pool of water, right? Mm. And then the, the, the turtle with a shield on its back, I mean, it, it's clear. And I, I find that you've you've done some great work on making people understand what abilities they should use on the enemies they have in front of them too yeah like i, th I think one Especially of the simplest ones too was just too. basically the way because i can't do that here but like the way uh your bullets just bounce off because th there's there's two parts to the feedback one for range is basically your projectile like hits and then just starts spinning up in the air and you hear like a different sound like a ting and you see it just bouncing off, uh, and then the other one is for melee. And when you're at, when you're in melee, basically, because you don't have to mash buttons while you're in melee mode, you just hold down the trigger, uh, and you're just constantly attacking. But if you hit something that it's like doing zero damage, you like bounce off of them. You do a hit react animation, you bounce off, and your controller rumbles. So it's very clear that oh shit, you you uh, you just got knocked back. So if I do, let's go Dungeon Builder. Yeah, so so that's pretty good for that feedback. And then, yeah, the, having having the Diamond guys, yeah. yeah that's an interesting other, uh, other, I guess it's not really an element, but it's like, uh, it's cool. I like it. Diamond guy, Diamond projectile. And then, because we could also do something where it's like, literally, because the way all those systems are set up, it could be literally any enemy type in the game can be turned into a diamond class version of that enemy. Mm -hmm. Although for a lot of the ranged guys, like, because there's ranged guys that just do, like, they just, their ranged attack is spin spiral. <laughs> so the only way, the only way to, uh, to defeat them like you not you can't deflect a spin spiral because it's a because it's a slash attack that will break your block. Mm -hmm. But yeah, let's look at got some turtles. Arm diamonds. <laughs> oh I got I got one there. How to farm diamonds, yeah. Oh, and that's something else we could probably do is they give you like bonus gold or something when, when they die. <laughs> More likely to give you certain types of. Uh, uh, let's see, I want to epic. I'll do giant, but not epic. Okay. Yeah, because all we're looking at here is just the hit react stuff when uh, when you do zero damage. Yep, yeah, like if I'm attacking him from behind, just bounces off. Or if I'm hitting this. You just get knocked back. So I guess the strategy with the turtle oh, is the only way you can hurt him is when you're in his line of fire. Yep. Because he's yeah. facing you and attacking. Got here from the front. Or you can try and... Oh, wait, let's see. Oh, ooh, the timing. Timing on these attacks. <laughs> Oof. What? Nope. Used to be better at this. There we go. Haha. <laughs> 
disarmed. Mm, nice. I am yeah, so those I'm not going to be able to deflect back if this is a diamond class enemy, right? I guess... Actually, what I'd probably do is I would just disable this kind of attack and he'd just do a regular ranged yeah. attack. Like that clipping? I'm always impressed. Yeah, yeah I, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just kind of stunned by how much you've been able to alter my animation to cre yeah. create a completely different feel for this boss. But it yeah. sort of works because he has, he's got the wind up, you've got the really yeah. nice yeah. long kind of anticipation. So, yeah. He's I mean, got it's a lot it's, of clipping, but visually it's a mess. <laughs> but but mm. gameplay wise, it works, and you still yeah. get the threat. There we go. Yeah. Deflected back. It's just... <laughs> it landed behind him. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's funny. I'm not sure what the stretching is though. I guess his hand is going off with the with the projectile. That seems yeah. to be what's happening. But, but also I realized, the, uh, I think it's we don't actually... targeted the goat rig. So it's actually the turtle animation yeah. playing on the goat rig, I believe. So yeah, that's yeah, that's something I've realized is like we awkward. don't. We don't necessarily, because like for a lot of the projectile or like thrown weapon animations you did for us, you like move the weapon bone away from the character, and we don't really need that because as soon as that happens, we hide the weapon mesh. Yep. And like, I mean, I, I'm so of two minds watching this because I'm like, one part of my brain is like, oh my god, the animation is completely broken, it's ruined, <laughs> and then in, in another part of my brain, I'm like, holy shit, that's a he turned it into a boss fight, and it kind of like yeah. works. Oh yeah, so <laughs> it's like a mini boss, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Like it's it's, it's kind of hard to show here, like because those I guess because I, I could do it with the chameleon, like, and I guess I'm lower level now too, so it works better. Because it's not so good with the turtles because of the way they attack. But I could go with, like if I go with chameleon, then like. And, like, the amount of damage I do with my attacks and stuff, it just becomes a lot more efficient. Like, one, you have to be a lot more careful about uh, getting hit, because it's like, yeah, one or two hits, and you're just going to be dead. And, hmm, that probably should have hit me. Like, Oh, no, yeah, because I have auto block. Oof. Ooh, there we go. So I disarmed him. Oh, my God. Ow. Nice. <laughs> that was a lot of damage. Actually, that wasn't a terrible amount. Boom, and he's dead. <laughs> Nice. It's kind of amazing. You can disarm enemies. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and if uh, if they stay alive for long enough, basically, if so, if they stay alive for long enough and they can get to their weapon, they'll go pick it up, and then they'll go back. They can do melee again after that. Shit, that is great. Mm -hmm. So, uh, it's been should we call it a stream soon? Because it's uh, it's been quite a while. Yeah, sure. Uh, yeah, thanks for stopping by, everybody. Uh, but yeah, we're gonna call it a stream. Don't think we'll raid anybody yeah, cool tonight, to though. But, uh, Let yeah, us know if you have any by. questions about the game or about what, uh, what you've seen. Yeah, Suggestions you... would be great, too. Yeah, for sure. Uh, if you want, like, we do these every Monday at 9, 9 p.m. Uh, cool. and we're, we're gonna be starting up some other stuff, too, soon. Uh, in the new year, Jacques is gonna be doing some modeling on Whenever he has some time, he might be streaming some of that. Yep. Uh, but yeah, we got plans and, for, uh, for more content. I'm also going to learn how to use the effects editor. If anyone wants to see me learn how to use the effects editor. <laughs> oh, yeah. And I might be helping train a friend in Unreal. So we might be streaming some of that of me, like, walking him through how to do stuff in Unreal, if anybody's interested in, in learning a bit of Unreal. And cool. we can do Q&A during that, too. So if you have any Unreal questions. Mm -hmm. yeah. I need to learn Unreal. It's it's yeah, pretty the, easy. It's the I think the most important thing, and this is I guess this is not the best uh, piece of advice for anybody who's what who says they want to learn Unreal or 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 doesn't put me in the best light. If it's just like yeah, I can tell you anything you want. The most important piece of information <laughs> is just Google Unreal space whatever you're trying to do, <laughs> and somebody's <laughs> probably tried it before. Somebody's asked somebody else has asked that question, and somebody else has answered it. There's a really good chance. Okay, anyway, we're going to call it a night. Good night, everybody. Yep. Thanks for stopping by. Good night. <laughs> yeah, feel free to contact us through Facebook, Twitter, or even here on Twitch if you have any questions about the game, and we might include it on next week's or the following streams. Thank you so much. Yeah. Or hold on. Take care. One sec. I'll grab, send invite to Discord. There we go. If you want to join our Discord, 
Here we go. Uh, but yeah, thanks for stopping by, everybody. Good night.